Alrighty, so, well, there, there's a dono right at the beginning. Um, Alright, so, what is probably the most common talking point in online lefty spaces nowadays? I'm not going to wait for you guys to answer that, I'm just going to answer it for you. The answer to this question is people who are ex-reactionaries, ex-Nazis, or ex-conservatives being accepted in leftist or progressive spaces, particularly leftist spaces, leftist spaces specifically. There is a lot of purity testing in these spaces. And I remember when I would talk about these things, a lot of people in even my own audience would start to question how prevalent this was. You know what I mean? Like, I would talk about how, no, the online left is extremely unaccepting of people who used to be reactionaries that changed their opinions and are better people now, but they're still slandered and kept out of the online left and ostracized, and it's going to, you know, it's going to start to make people not want to become leftists. It's going to push away people who might be susceptible to our ideology. And um, a lot of people didn't believe me. A lot of people, like, second-guessed or uh, questioned how accurate that was, but... um. As of late, and we'll get into that in a minute, I've been proven absolutely 100% correct, and I'm glad that everybody realizes that now. So, my most popular video on my channel is this one. It has almost 666,000 views, which is super based. I really, uh, I definitely hope to see it when it ticks over to 66666, because, you know, evil... Uh, hell number, really based. Um, and it's how I fell down the alt-right pipeline and escaped. And I highly recommend you watch this video, although I imagine many of you in chat right now probably found me through this video, if we're being honest. Um, this In this video, I go into deep, deep detail, chronicling the events of my political journey from the time of being around, I mean, since I was like eight years old and I learned what politics even was, to, well... December 24th of 2019, it was my whole political journey up to that point, how I got pulled down the alt-right rabbit hole, the state of mind I was in at that time, and then obviously now. Like, how I'm, I'm a leftist now, so how I got here, right? And um, there are a lot of very viral videos, especially back in 2019 that came out, talking about this topic because there are a lot of young people who get pulled down that rabbit hole and then realize what they did was, or what they believed was wrong, and then improve themselves, which is something that should be congratulated. We should all congratulate people who used to be alt-right, but then got out of it because they realized it was wrong, and they're moving past it. The problem is, the online left is unbelievably unforgiving. You know how, um, one of the core beliefs of leftism is the idea that our, um, justice system should be rehabilitative and not like retributive 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 in the sense that if someone goes to prison or someone faces legal consequences for something it should be to rehabilitate them and make them a better more functioning part of society rather than just to torture them in retribution for what they did? Well, leftists will talk about that all day, but at the same time, their purity testing, will they'll literally brand somebody as an undesirable if they ever at one point in their life used to believe bad things. It's retributive? Ret retributive. Ret retributive. Okay, there we go. Um, well, we're going to go ahead and talk about that. We're going to go ahead and talk about how unforgiving leftists on Twitter are to these people. And don't. And it may sound like this isn't important. Oh, it's just Twitter lefties. Twitter is the most popular social media app in the world, okay? If people who are maybe on the edge of getting into leftism are going to see leftists online, they're probably going to see it on Twitter, and what they see on Twitter is going to influence their likelihood of moving further left. So this is absolutely worth talking about, and this is absolutely trying to influence change in. It's absolutely worth it. So, <clears throat> as you can see, uh, I prepared for this segment a couple days ago, back on the 9th, because there was a viral tweet going around that I quote tweeted and said, gonna do a segment during my next stream on people saying this shit. Please drop screenshots slash link similar tweets for me to respond to in the comments. Uh, obviously this person saw me quote tweet it and didn't want me to, uh, you know, do a segment on them, or partially on them, and blocked me. So I actually can't see that tweet anymore, but thankfully, someone fucking quote tweeted it. Or, or screenshotted it before I got blocked. So I can actually see the person and the tweet. So that's nice. And obviously, here's my tweet. 
let's go ahead and uh, take a look, huh? So somebody tweeted, everybody sucked when they were a teenager, forgive yourself. And then it got 153k likes, and that is true. Um, we probably shouldn't be holding teenagers to account for the shit they did, like when they were 15 or 14, now that they're adults. Like, how much dumb shit do you think you said and did when you were a teenager before you knew better? Come on, all right? If you were like a fucking reactionary when you were 15, you, you can probably forgive yourself if you're better now, all right? The, come on. It's fucking... You were a teenager. And this person named uh, Lena Luxray, who I believe follows me and might even be watching the stream right now. If you are, uh, I'm sorry you got so much shit for this. Um, uh, responded, true, I was a Nazi. I'm so much better now. And then a smiling little emoji. Now, I doubt that they expected their tweet to um, blow up as much as it did, but this person ended up facing a torrent of harassment from people like this, which we'll get into in a moment. Um, now, to be fair... This is probably not the best way to word this tweet. I don't think they expected it to get all that much attention. Um, but if, if I were in their place, I would have said something along the lines of, True, when I was young and impressionable, I was groomed into being a alt-writer or a Nazi, but I, f I realized this stuff was wrong as I got older and more mature, and now I'm not anymore, and I'm so glad that I, that I went through that experience and realized why it was wrong. Um, something like that probably would have just been a better wording of this, but either way, this isn't a tweet worth, like, calling out. That's a long tweet? Yeah, but I, I, like, at least for me, I spend a long time, like, looking over my tweets before I click the send button, especially nowadays. Um, but this got screenshotted by a lot of people, but this is arguably one of the, um, one of, like, the larger tweets that at least showed up on my timeline about it. Um, from suspected communist activity, by the way, if you have a name like this on Twitter and it's not like part of your gimmick or whatever, um, you just decide to name yourself this, then you should probably shove your head into a blender in uh, a video game because, whew, I really cannot stand the dumb shit that people who have like their political ideology or some dumb flags relating to their political ideology and their name say. If it's your fucking at, that's fine. But if it's your name that you chose to type out that you could have made anything, then you're probably a LARPing dipshit. Just saying. Um, and if you're one of those people and you're an okay person you're watching right now, please change that. For the love of God, please change that. Come up with a normal username, all right? And you wonder why people don't trust white leftists. Sound like something a white person would say, huh? Um, yeah, so that was the original tweet that kind of goaded me into making this segment. And I ended up requesting for people to drop screenshots below for us to go over. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> the fact you were able to be groomed into a racist is pathetic. Shut the fuck up. You're still going to be burning in hell, ma'am. Get run over by a steamroller. And you're going to hell, you ugly ass roach. A Nazi once is a Nazi always and forever. There is no excuse, no justification ever that you can justify this with. No matter what you and others may think, at a bare minimum, you should be fully ostracized from civil society for the rest of your life. No communist justice until revolutionary justice first. Sorry, we aren't looking to rehabilitate Nazis, but to liquidate them. Loading up the liquidator. I guarantee these same people um, advocate for, like, uh, serial killers and rapists to be uh, fucking rehabilitated in prisons, by the way. That's the funny thing, how hypocritical these pieces of shit are. Um, so that was one tweet from Shu. Is this the same one? Yeah, it's the same tweet from Shu. Here's some more. Um, like, worst I did was skip school and steal shit from the mall as a teen, and y'all are talking about y'all had a Nazi phase? Lamau, huh. Well, that was the most obnoxious tweet I've ever read. So casually, too, as if everyone has. I mean, I can't read the rest of that. If you went through a Nazi phase you're better and you're better now, you should be too embarrassed to admit you went through a Nazi phase. This is super fucking dumb, because if these people dug up that a leftist secretly did go through a Nazi phase, they would be mad that they did weren't open about it and they tried to hide it. Being open about it and taking accountability for your old beliefs is probably one of the most admirable, admirable things that I can think of for someone who used to be a reactionary. Interesting how it's never POC on here talking about how normal it is to have had a Nazi phase. Yeah, I, I fucking wonder why. Um, 
I, I don't know if like the the implication of this is that like people of color have never had reactionary phases. They absolutely have. I mean, literally Milo Yiannopoulos right now and his like fucking uh, mad grab for some kind of relevance at this very moment is claiming to be ex-gay. And yes, we are going to talk about that next stream. Don't worry. Um, there are absolutely people of color and minorities that go through phases like this. If you had a Nazi phase, yeah, I most likely will never feel unsafe. I will most likely never fully feel safe never feel fully safe around you, and given how easily you dehumanized me, I don't owe you access to me. If you think I do that, um, if I think you, if you think I do, that phase may still be here. I'm a human being with autonomy. Any askers? Any, any fucking askers in chat? Hold on, chat, I'm very curious. Do we have any ax askers in chat? Who, who the fuck asked? Who the fuck asked, okay? Nobody cares. No, I'm not trying to... Listen, I'm gonna be honest, the gayest A around and then some weird fucking uh, uh, font here. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't want any access to you. I don't care who you are. I don't want to talk to you. I don't think anybody uh, wants to talk to you, in fact. Um, nobody fucking asked, all right? Obviously, here's somebody that uh, archived the tweet. Um, somebody else who archived the tweet. White leftists telling other leftists that it's okay they used it's okay that they used to be fascists. No, baby, it's not actually. This one's from back in September 2020. This one got really big. And I think I want to keep it on screen here um, while we talk about this uh, this topic, okay? Um, yeah, 47k likes. This proves how uh, prevalent this idea is in leftist communities. Um, this person uh, and their entire ideology is subhuman to me, by the way. Um, yeah, so here's my... Here's what I want to talk about, okay? Is it okay that a leftist is an ex-Nazi? That they used to be a Nazi or an alt-writer or even like a cringy anti-SJW type, but now they've realized it's wrong and they're leftist. Is it okay? No. It is not okay that young teenagers who are in an impressionable stage of their lives are being groomed by uh, demagogues that are typically paid by millionaires, people like Ben Shapiro, people like Alex Jones, people who have massive amounts of funding behind them whose entire career is to influence impressionable, typically young white men, but not always, into moving towards the alt-right. Um, no, that is not okay, and it is not normal. However, however, that is not the fault of those impressionable kids. I'm sorry, is it not an extremely well-known fact, historically speaking, that um, nobody is born racist, nobody is born a Nazi, young impressionable people in vulnerable places are um, groomed into it, typically by adults or malicious actors, they're the victims of grooming? Are we at the point now where the left on Twitter has become so woke that we're now shaming victims of grooming? Is that where we are now? Are you fucking kidding me? This has been a, a classic tactic even before the existence of the internet. Um, what would happen was, um, let's say uh, we can go back to prisons, we can go back to like the streets of New York City back in like the fucking 20s and 40s and stuff like that. Um, typically what would happen, like I guess you would say the... Um, pre-internet version of the alt-right rabbit hole was, um, let's say there's a young white boy on the street who, um, who's poor, right? Can't afford to feed their family and, um, you know, uh, is living in squalor. Um, white supremacist gangs and organizations would groom these young, typically young boys and offer to take care of them and their family in exchange for them adopting the ideology of these white supremacist gangs and engaging in, like, work for them, right? This is how it would happen back in the day. 14, 15, even younger kids would be groomed by adults that would find them on the street that would offer them incentive for joining their ideology. And then on top of that, 
they would groom these kids into ostracizing other people in their lives that aren't part of like white supremacy or, or aren't like Nazis themselves, neo-Nazis, in order to make it so that they are so unpalatable to the public that they have no one else to turn to and they're stuck. They're absolutely stuck in the in the neo-Nazi or white supremacist gangs or, or ideology because no one else will take them in. Which by the way, when Twitter lefties do the kind of shit we've been going over here, it enforces that. Do you really think that Nazis are going to want to not be Nazis anymore when they see that the left isn't going to accept them? Or do you think instead they're going to realize there's no chance for them to go back and they're going to go, I don't know, shoot up a synagogue? This has been well studied. This has been extremely well studied. Hold on, let's look up um, neo-Nazi radicalization history. Um, let's see. If you want to learn a lot about this, I recommend, where is it? Uh, leaving Hate Behind. Here it is. I recommend checking this out. I read this back in the day. Um, it was a study that was basically about, like, the radicalization of people to the alt-right and neo-Nazism before the internet, like, offline. Um, there's a lot of, like, historical consensus on this. You can look up videos about it. Um, it it's really fucked up. All right? and it, it specifically targets young people. But right now, I'm going to defend the mindset, or I should say the morality, of young, typically white males, but not always, that were groomed into the alt-right and proving that these people weren't just bad and there wasn't something inherently wrong with them. Because that's the point that these people are making. If you were ever at any point groomed into being a Nazi, there must be something inherently wrong with you deep down that, um, that made you be that way. Because if you were a good person, then you would have never been pulled into that. Hold on, what's this? Germany never stopped being a Nazi state. Y'all just rebranded. Nazis aren't people. Also, yes, my grandfather believed all Nazis should be lined up and shot. I mean, okay. Um, all right. So, I'm going to defend the people who are ex-Nazis and prove that they aren't just bad people, all right? So something you have to realize is modern-day neo-Nazi and alt-right radicalization doesn't try to convince people that like they should hate black people or if they should hate jewish people or if they should hate trans people okay he, this is how they this is how they basically as someone who is a victim of this this is how they push their ideology okay what they try to do is they find people typically young straight white male middle to upper class gamers these are the number one demographic the alt-right rabbit hole tends to suck in. The reason for this is because these are young people who don't know a lot about the world, they don't know better, and also they have a lot of certain insecurities that can be taken advantage of, just as every teenager does, right? So, let's say you're a 15-year-old white boy living in the suburbs. You've probably not met, met very many black people if you're living in, like, the suburbs or a very nice neighborhood due to black people's socioeconomic state in this country as a product of racism. So you're probably pretty uh, susceptible to this ideology. You know, you probably don't know a lot of black people. You don't know a lot about racial injustice in America because here in America, in most states, at least in the state I grew up in, they taught us that the Civil War was about uh, states' rights, and they kind of gave us the impression that segregation and other racist practices in the government were a long time ago. And, and as a country, we've long gotten over that kind of stuff. That was the impression that I got from my schooling, being a Floridian. And a lot of people in more conservative states, which is a significant amount of states in America, um, you know, basically the whole South, uh, were taught the same thing. Um, so, <clears throat> what do you do if you don't know the counter argument to it when you hear the statistic 1350? When you hear that black people are such a small percentage of the population and yet apparently commit so much crime, like 50% of the crime or even more, how are you meant to deal with that if you don't know better, if you don't know the correct response to that? 
How I, I'm really curious. How do you respond to that? Even if you were taught and you grew up believing racism was wrong, when you hear a statistic like that, if you're somebody who believes that you should um, adhere to facts and logic, which I think a lot of young 15-year-old fucking white boys or just in general people try to do, they most people want to be correct. And if they hear a statistic, they're like, oh, that's a statistic. I want to be correct. Facts, not feelings, right? A lot of um, young people don't know how to respond to that statistic. The Position of black people in this country actually requires a fair amount of research to understand. The 1350 statistic becomes makes a lot more sense when you realize the history of what black people have to have had to go through in this country. Um, obviously, most black people in this country are the descendants of slaves. Um, I would say almost every black person in this country, like their parents or grandparents, had to deal with redlining and segregation, which massively impacted their socioeconomic position in this country. And guess what? Poor people tend to do more crime. When I explain it like that, it's a lot more simple, but you need it explained to you in a way that is, um, that makes sense, right? It's important. So with that said, if you're like a 15 year old white boy or something that doesn't know that, how the fuck else are you supposed to respond, but to say, okay, Black people in this country have a problem. Now, you'd probably start out by saying something like, black people are choosing to do this and need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. But as you discover these demagogues that are supported with tons of financial support that have massive YouTube channels, I mean, by the way, you guys do know the largest independent political content creator on YouTube is Tim Pool. And if you go down the list of independent um, political content creators on YouTube, you're going to go for a while before you get to the largest left-leaning one, which is ContraPoints. You're going to go down through a lot of right-wing one ones before you reach ContraPoints or any left-leaning ones, okay? Trust me, you're going to find a lot of right-wing ones before you find a left-leaning one, okay? It's actually TYT. Independent content creator. God damn it. Lonnie, we argued about this the other day. When I talk about independent content creators, I'm talking about people in their room who are paid by their audiences, um, who don't have any like outside funding, who are just making videos in their bedroom. That's what I mean. That's the more... Guys, okay. Oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. Hold on. So one of the biggest appeals to someone like Sargon of Akkad is that they're, so, they're just kind of sitting in their room talking to the camera. You know, even Tim Pool has this where he's just kind of chilling at a table like a podcast like Joe Rogan would talking to the camera. That's much more engaging and helps the audience build a lot more trust in the content creator, a parasocial relationship even than, for example, the Young Turks, which frames itself as being like a very professional um, like news show. Right. It's a lot hard. I don't know why it's so loud outside. I hope you guys can't hear that. Um, if, when you watch TYT, it's probably a lot harder to grow a parasocial relationship with that content creator than you would with like the likes of Sargon or Tim Pool or Chris Reagan or Shoe on Head, right? Not saying Chris Reagan and Shoe on Head are all right or even conservative. Just saying that that I, I've reiterated what I mean when I say independent content creators because, and this also plays a huge part into it, there are a lot of independent content creators that do content that... Um, specifically is very effective at building a line of trust between the content creator and the person consuming the content. It feels really good when you have a funny, engaging, charismatic content creator who you could almost imagine is in the room talking directly to you. You don't get that from like John Oliver, really. Like, does anybody here when they watch John Oliver feel like John Oliver is in the room with them and is talking directly to, to you? Or do you think it's more like he's making a big presentation for a shit ton of people? Because that's how I feel when I watch the likes of John Oliver, right? However, when I watch someone like Sargon of Akkad, when I would watch him back when I liked Sargon of Akkad, it felt like he could be right in front of me talking about this to me in like a Discord call, or in the same room as me. And believe it or not, that is very, very, very effective when it comes to building a trusting parasocial relationship with the audience, which makes those people who consume that content way more likely to fall further into that content and build more trust with that content creator and to believe anything they say, even if they don't substantiate it very well. So... If you were one of these people who got pulled to the far right back in like 
2014 to I'd say 2018, like late 2018 to early 2019, there was probably nothing for you, like politically, that you were going to stumble across in the YouTube algorithm besides right-leaning channels or like cringy anti-SJW channels. BreadTube wasn't a thing back in 2014, 15, and 16. Do you know who, like, what BreadTubers were around in 2016? Kevin Logan, Peter Coffin, Christy Winters, and um, there's a couple more that are still around now, but I can't think of many. Those were the people that were around. They all had less than 100. Yeah, many of you are probably going to say literally who. Um those were the only people that were really around back then, and all of them got utterly shit on. Sean was around, and he got shit on too. All of them got shit. Any any YouTuber you could think of got oh, probably got overwhelming dislikes to likes on their videos, and were dunked on constantly. Shuan Head was an anti SGW back then. They all got dunked on by the anti SGW community. Hold on, can I show you guys the um? VidCon 2016 Kekistan flag. Here's a, uh, yep, Francesca Ramsey got endlessly bullied. Here it is. Ah, this image uh, is probably pretty fucking embarrassing for some people in the picture, but we still have to show it. Um, here is the uh, anti-SJW cinematic universe uh, gathering here. Um, I don't recognize a ton of these people in person. Um, this person's doing the OK sign next to the Kekistan flag. So we have Chris Raygun. We've got Andy Worski, I believe. We've got Sargon of Akkad, some black guy, Andy Worski's friend that I don't know the name of, uh, and some other people here. And, and believe it or not, um, many of these people... This was VidCon 2016. Look at this. Look at that. That's got to be fucking embarrassing. Listen, some of the people in that lineup right now are would cringe if they saw this picture right now. If Chris Raygun saw this picture today, he'd probably consider actually drinking bleach um, because of how embarrassing it would be for him. Um, however, this right here was the lineup of content creators that you had to look forward to if uh, if you were online and trying to get political back in 2016. And this isn't even counting the big ones like Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, and so on, right? These are just like the more independent sitting in your own room making videos content creators, right? Is that Razor Fist on the right? Might be, I don't know. I don't recognize a lot of these people in person, but there's, I think that's Count Dankula. I, I believe that's Count Dankula there. Um, yeah, here's, here's, I think that's the Amazing Atheist with the shitlord. Uh, sure. Oh boy. Wow. He probably cringes at that back. But my, my point is, okay, nobody is born a Nazi or a reactionary or a right winger. They're groomed into it when they're in a very vulnerable or naive, impressionable state. Okay. And it does not make you a bad person to have ever been pulled into that and to have realized it was wrong and to have gotten out. Okay. If you're like a trans person or a black person, you feel uncomfortable being around somebody who used to be a Nazi but got out of it, fine. Don't hang out with them. But don't fucking signal boost shit like this that is only going to make um, the right or is only going to make uh, people who are ex-Nazis or who are teetering towards moving left um, uh, like put, be pushed away from the left. Also, I've heard this dumb fucking comment a million times. Why do we want Nazis on the left? What the fuck are you talking about? Who the fuck? Who the fuck is saying this? Who the fuck is saying that we should have Nazis on the left? I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm not seeing anybody. Nobody is advocating for Nazis to be on the left, okay? Fucking nobody. The point that we're making is that we should try to influence Nazis to not be Nazis anymore so they come to the left and help the left become bigger and stronger. That's the entire point. I don't want Nazis on the left. I'm not looking to have people who are who, who hate black people and Jews and trans people, but they believe in class, uh, whatever the fuck, like communism, to be on the left. That's not what anybody is fucking talking about. The point is to make them not Nazis. Nazis anymore, you quivering fucking dumb fucks. Please 
have a wonderful life and never consider self-harm or suicide. That really pisses me off. That really, really fucking pisses me off. Listen, I want you to know right now, you have my permission to call anybody who tweets dumb shit like this a politically ineffective, LARPing, subhuman dipshit. You have my permission to call them that. Fuck them. Let's go ahead and look at the comments of my uh, All Right Rabbit Hole video. Where is it? It's got to come up pretty early. There it is. Let's look at the comments of this video. All right, hello everyone, it's Pig Puncher. Let's look at how effective this video was and how many people who are now leftists relate to this. 30, yes, I like my own videos, shut up. 38,000 likes to 2.7k dislikes. I imagine a lot of the 2.7k dislikes were uh, Nazis, people who are currently Nazis. Um, yeah, I know, Pig Puncher, shut up, please. Hunter Avalone, such a great, uh, this is such an interesting video, watch the whole thing, a lot of it resonated with me as well, thank you. Um, <laughs> how I fell down the alt-right pipeline, escaped it, started when I was a gamer, poor dude didn't stand a chance. I'm a lesbian who was turned into the anti-SGW movement uh, because of the LGBT political stereotypes people tried to force me into. I never, here, here's someone who is literally a lesbian woman who is pushed into the alt-right. It's not just fucking edgy white boys. There are trans people who've gotten pulled into this. Black people have been pulled into it. Gay people have been pulled into it. Um, like, anybody can be pulled into it. But to be fair, it mostly, it, it mostly affects, like, teenage white boy gamers um, who are straight, you know? Um, hey, wait, that's the video that got me into your content? I imagine many of you discovered me because of this video. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so it's like a bunch of people saying that, like, oh, thank you for this video, you helped me get me out of this, or I went through the same thing, uh, or, like, just people saying they liked my story. It, it reached a lot of people. It resonated with a lot of people. There are a lot of, a lot, a lot of people online who are now leftists that used to be alt-right that have now gotten out of it, okay? So, yeah. Do we agree? Hypers, if we all agree. I'm glad. All right. Listen, if you're a Twitter lefty and you see this video, please fucking stop, okay? You're doing nothing to help the left. You don't need to associate with anybody if you find out that they used to be a Nazi. But I will say to you, someone who used to be a Nazi is someone who's heard every argument and belief that Nazis have, then realized it was all wrong and moved to the left. I want to tell you right now, a leftist, I would say right now, a leftist who used to be a Nazi, who's heard all of the Nazi memes and all of the Nazi arguments and is now a leftist because they realized how wrong those arguments are, are going to be way more politically effective than a morally lucky dipshit who just lucked into ending up, they just lucked into the first ideology they stumbled across being leftism. Because guess what? People who've never experienced or heard the right wing or Nazi arguments are not going to be as effective at arguing against them as people who used to believe them and realize they were wrong. I promise you, I want you to consider that. Just because you lucked out and you didn't get sucked into the wormhole of right-wing content that existed back in 2014 to 2018 doesn't mean that you're better than people who did get sucked in, who were groomed into it and got out. And I will go as far as to say, any day of the week, ex-Nazis who are now leftists are more effective to the left than people who've been leftists all their lives, who just got morally lucky, any day. Because they know the arguments, and they know how to debunk those arguments, because it worked on them, and it'll typically work on others. That's all, really. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Subscribe and ring the bell icon if you haven't already. You, if you want to support me financially, you can donate or sub on my website, xanderhall.com forward slash live. If you want to support me financially on YouTube, you can super chat or hit the join button, become a channel member. You get all sorts of cool perks on the channel if you do that, especially in the comment section of the videos. Highly recommend you do that. 
You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram, the link in the description. You can also join my fan Discord, the link in the description, which I highly appreciate. It's a fantastic community. And if you join my fan Discord, you have a chance of talking to me or even debating me. Hey, listen, if you're one of these Twitter lefties that was doing this kind of shit and you want to debate me, hit me up on Discord. I'll do it. I'll debate you on stream. Um, and of course, you can also uh, sub to me on Patreon. And I forget to mention every time, I have merch. If you want to buy Xanderhald merch, there is a link in the description of the YouTube stream and all my videos. You can buy Xanderhall merch. It's super fucking cool. You can get a Xanderhall shirt or a hoodie or a mug or some shit like that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, just do that if you want to. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one. Thank you.